And we are back. Calling in today, I got from the band Nonpoint, the one and only Elias Soriano. How are you doing, my friend? How are you doing, Jeremy? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So I've been doing some research on you, man, and I I saw the interview where you were talking about your childhood, cleaning the house with your folks, listening to music. So they got you started at a young age, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we all get into music discovery when we're coming up. We realize that there's something about it that, uh, you know, causes an emotional response and uh, connections to happen. And, um, I got that at a young age. And it was, you know, it, it comes a lot with volume. You know, people don't really give volume enough credit. Um, you know, when you're hearing songs at full volume, it really does uh, give you the full scope of what you're listening to. You know, that's why, that's why the live show is such a living and breathing thing it's because of the the connection that you make with it when you have that you know share that experience with it and it it, it goes with uh with music in general it's amazing how you go to a show and you you get there and you get your spot and you look over the guy next to you and kind of give him that nod and by the That's end of the show the oh yeah by the end of the show you're you know passing the doobie and sharing social media information yeah it's, it's part of the community the rock community that people don't, don't uh, really get to understand or ex experience unless they, they go and it's, show. it's really amazing you see these people you know myself long hair tattoos all this craziness but some of the nicest people help yeah somebody asked me in an interview uh, ship rock I, I bet that's a wild non-stop you know uh uh battle between drunk people i'm like no actually uh five ship rocks i've been on i've seen one fight and it was between two band dudes <laughs> that's so <laughs> that's the that's the, the, the stereotype that comes with the rock crowd is isn't uh isn't fair no. as any stereotype really isn't right. it definitely has its its truths uh but it, overall rock fans are, are loving They're right. very welcoming as visual yeah. as a mosh pit is and as you know violent as it looks i don't know how many times i've seen someone fall down and you know four or five hands reaching down to help pick them back up you know, look at look at rituals look at rituals around the world that you see you know boys climbing up towers and having their uh, bodies pierced and attached to vines as they jump from six yeah. stories to become a man you know it's 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 a rite of passage and if you happen to grow up and be raised by a community that is uh, that does have some of its roots and some of its patches of ground uh, uh, flourishing in rock music, then you will be baptized in the pit. Right. It's just the way it happens. Um, <laughs> you know, my wife, my wife and I were talking about. Uh, I think it was Phil Demel uh, who just had a. a white trash themed birthday party for his kid and i'm like that's what i'm fucking talking about it's, that's you're a rock yeah you're a rock dad that's the kind of life you want to that's the story that you you get to to create and tell you know and that's that's what I took this mayhem jesus thing and it's carried me to two radio shows yeah why should it end? keep pushing that's that's the whole uh uh i mean look at us <laughs> nirvana as a band that took me from listening to what my mom listened to in the car is searching out my own music. And you kind of hit on that a little bit earlier. Uh, what's the band that took you from, from your parents' stuff to, to your own path? You know, it's strange. I remember my childhood and the things that used to drive my childhood in a different way than, than, than other people kind of uh, uh, shuffle through their memories. I don't have those kind of detailed benchmark, uh, uh, top of mind names. I, when I grew up, I grew up in a relatively shitty neighborhood, and, and it was a, it was a tough coming up. Strict parents, you know, trying not to be uh, uh, a gangster. <laughs> so, but they're relatively uh, not the best neighborhood in the world. So, right. Um, you know. I, a lot of the things that I I started to 
fall in love with and I was directed to discover was for safety right. and for acceptance. You know, and, and it might be the same coming up in a, in, a, in, a, in a rock community. I didn't come up in a rock community. I was welcomed into the rock community. Right. So there's a huge difference. Um, I came up understanding and respecting classic rock right. and understanding that there was something about Fleetwood Mac and Stevie Nicks, uh, you know, James Taylor and Boston, uh, Journey and, and Bad Company, Led Zeppelin and the Beatles. And there was something about all these bands that, that made me, even as a child, understand that I was listening to something that was brilliant and that I needed to at least respect it to the point of being familiar with it. When I grew up, uh, you know, my neighborhood wasn't that kind of neighborhood where classic right. rock was going to fare me well in walking around my neighborhood saying that I was digging James Taylor. Absolutely. You know, I, I needed to learn about hip hop. I needed to learn about pop music. Um, I needed to fall into that culture. We're really for survival. And, and uh, then from there, uh, you know, I had I found my loves and my roots in that hip hop pop community, and then found the brilliance in that young up and coming genre. Because you got to remember, I came I was born in '75, so I I came up during the time that hip hop was born. So it uh, it was so young. That it, it, it wasn't like rock music where it was. I was able to immediately respect it just based on its merit and the fact that it had a bunch of artists behind it who had curated their talents, you know, and, and done it and worked with, you know, half million dollar producers, spent a half a million to record a record and stuff like that where hip hop really wasn't uh, there yet. So there was something in its raw form that kept me from completely saying that this is the only thing that I'm going to listen to. So I always kept my other loves, classic rock and in jazz, uh, you know, and hip hop and pop. And, right. Well, that carries and over to Nonpoint. You can hear that influence in your music today. Yeah, and uh, it comes from, let, you know, us understanding that it's letting everybody have those kinds of uh, 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 wells to draw from that I don't want to say, hey man, that sounds too much like this, so I don't want to even try that. No, yeah. that's not what we do. We 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 give it a swing and see if it if, if it you know fits in, in our in our puzzle piece hole. Sometimes it, it takes a little flipping and finagling and turning and all of a sudden, oh my god, this is the right piece. It's really nice to hear that the the rock and metal community were so welcoming. I'm not surprised, but it's good to to hear you say it. Yeah, it's it's it, believe me, it comes with its its critics, its harsh critics. No, oh, for sure. Um, I came up in in new metal, so it's it's that's like wearing a badge on your arm. You know, people are like yeah, I was in Vietnam. I'm like yeah, I came up in new metal. They're like yeah. oh shit, for real? I'm sorry, yeah. man. I don't know it was like that. Uh, you know, there was a bit of a stigma behind it where. You know, it, it was almost like the next hair metal. Right. That's what so, kind of drew me, I think, though, was the stigma with it. Yeah, and what people didn't understand is the stigma was the fact that it was so fucking fun. Right. And that's what people didn't didn't like in rock. Is like, this is too much fun. You guys are enjoying yourselves and you're adding too much different kinds of stuff into rock. And now it's a, it's it, it is what is making rock rock right now. If you look at all the top of all the playlists, it's people that have found those rhythms that come from hip hop and come from you know those R and B vocal lines that come from R and B that I hear all over. Right. You know the the new rock that's coming out. There's a my I've got a buddy Matt Poe. He he plays bass with a band called Seasons. I think actually they're going to be at Blue Ridge this year. He was talking to me about the same thing about how you know how much hip hop is influencing their music, and and you can hear it with them too. I mean, and even their videos they start looking like a, a rap video from '99. Yeah, 
for for I think for us, we uh, we understand that I think our struggle with our fans and with the industry when they look at our band is is understanding where the imagery and the music meet with the personality and the stage show, and we really haven't been able to to give people that peek behind the curtain until the last couple of years, bringing in our, our creative director, and, you know, uh, starting our own label, and, you know, doing these things that all of a sudden put a level of consideration to the art along with the, 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 uh, the sale and the push of the product. Right. Um, and, and I feel like it's that extra, transparency that we're giving our audience uh, that has us uh, winning right now. I tell you what, you've got a fan base like no other. The 361 crew is just pumping full time and they love you guys. Every it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a blessing and, and I don't, I, I, I try not to take it for granted, but I try to let it be the thing that I get to sit back and watch and enjoy. Right. And this, uh, in the camp is I have my hands in so many other things on the other side with, you know, talking to people like you, uh, talking to my team and working on the music and posting and those kind of things that it's, it's, it's almost like walking in my garden. I really like going over to the 361 page and, and listening in. Right. Fly on the wall kind of shit. Yeah, man. It really, it really, uh, it's, it's, um, it's, it's the good part. It's one of the good parts. Of it. I'm glad that you get to enjoy that, man. It's, it seems like a lot of these guys are so separated from the fans that they don't really they get just, to see. They don't ask. They don't, it's funny. They don't ask. Me. They just want to. It's great. They just want to support them right. and want us to know that they're supporting. It is unmatched, the feeling that you get knowing that you have that kind of support system. It's all your, uh, your book for Shiprock this year. So this is going to be, what, number six, would it be? Uh, I believe it is number, for me, it is number six. Right uh, oh, no, number five. I could probably ask Rob right now, and right. He'll, he'll tell me. Rob, my drummer, he knows this. Uh, we literally tap him for every single thing that has to do with our past. Yeah, um, he seems like he's, he's on top of that stuff. So uh, Shiprock is, is one of those things that um, unless you see it yourself, you'll, you wouldn't believe it. Watching a boat full, full of metalheads um, disembark in Mexico oh. is fucking great. And, 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 you know, you got your people around you and, you know, tattoos, dreadlocks, and piercings. Everybody's out and, and the Mexican people and the people in the islands, every single time we've gone, adore us. Absolutely welcome us. Have so much fun because it's a rock crowd. Yeah. So, you know, you drop us all into a vacation spot. And instead of us being the minority, when we're the majority. Oh, yeah. And we get to kind of run the bar the way we kind of run bars back at home. It turns Mexico into, you know, fucking ship rock. It's. It's the coolest. It's it's one of the coolest things to ever experience. Big shout out to to Alan and Al and, and the whole Shiprock crew. We 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 fucking adore doing that thing. Twenty twenty started out rough with passing of my mother and all that. And whenever I'm COVID sorry, hit, but when COVID hit, it just kind of got to be a bit much for me. So I took a road trip, and I was on the road going to Tennessee because I love to get out in the mountains and hike, and that's kind of like my church where I can clear my head and. And think yeah kind of heal up a little bit and while i was on the road i saw a ship rocker group post about a party down in wiki Wachi, florida and i had crashed one of their parties at hell's dam i met one person briefly i ate a shrimp at her camp and then i went back and started drinking again and i was on the road and i saw her post about that party in wiki Wachi. 
And all I said was, it sounds like fun. Well, they invited me down, and I ended up going down there and partying with 20 strangers for a weekend. And it was probably one of the greatest times we've had. In they're family now. I mean, they they that's are a, legit family now. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Your interaction with the fans, you know, between you and Rob, especially you two, seem like the hard hitters with the fans. Yeah, we try to be, and, and, and you know, this has been our baby from the beginning, so we're obviously going to be a little bit more vested. But all of my guys really love to, to be on the socials, and, and uh, you know, it makes a huge difference, talk. and it gives you so yeah. much. Like the loyalty that you guys have from your fans is is unreal, and it's worldwide. I've I've got a uh, actually a question I was going to ask you from Amanda Rundle in Australia because she's hating that you guys haven't been over there. Yeah, we're back up and we're actually having conversations with uh, a, a pretty big act uh, that's talking about we're going to test something here in the States, uh, see how the fan bases interact. And if it works, we might be going to Australia and New Zealand. So that's awesome. I, I think for you know. Hell yeah. She'll be thrilled to hear it. I think all of Australia will be thrilled to hear it. 361 yeah, carries heavy over there. Yes, and if not, we've already talked as a label, and we're going to make sure that that's part of the uh, the, the touring plan. So we're, we're definitely going to go, irregardless of whom we go with. If it has to just be us, we're going. That's awesome, man. That's the thing that makes the fans love you so much, I think. Your dedication. Yeah, we know that it's been, it's, we've neglected our overseas travel, and, you know, we've had teams that have, that has, have always discouraged us because of numbers and dollars right now with us being the ones investing in, in us there is no excuse that's the plan we just want to get there and and, and, and and hug our overseas people just gotta get the hug i just had ralph sutton on not long ago i saw that you did the sdr show yes man that's they're ralph a fun is, group aren't they ralph is my man ralph yeah. is my boy i love ralph uh he's um Relationships on the uh, in the music industry are interesting because we have such fast-paced, long-list uh, lives on the on the side of, of when we're pushing our our fans and our businesses that we don't like to impose on each other's free time. So it's it's nice to not feel any guilt when you haven't seen each other right. for uh, for some time, and and it's great to always be able to. Uh, Say hey, get that smile and not like, hey man, you never fucking called me. Yeah, right. Uh, that uh, Ralph is one of those people that that every single time I see him, it's a smile on his face, and we pick up like it was just yesterday that we spoke, and, and I cherish those kinds of relationships. Well, hey, man, I don't want to keep you all day. I just, uh, I'm glad I got a little time to talk to you. Let's talk about this new single you yeah. got out before we get off of here. It's going over well. Everybody I've heard mention it loves it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's doing really well. Uh, the team is really excited about the, the response. Uh, you know, fans are loving it. The video is is uh, is getting a ridiculous amount of response. Yeah, it's um, awesome. It, it's a little bit slowed right now because of it's. Uh, it doesn't really pass all of the uh, the. Uh, I don't. I don't even know how to describe it. The uh, it's getting flagged a little bit because of the amount of violence in it. So, so I hate viewer, that, man. yeah, viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> it, 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 it is a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit out of character for non point. We wanted that. We, you know, the song is ruthless and uh So is the video. Yes. We wanted the imagery to match the music and we feel like we really hit it out. 